Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll say I'll like, save the uh yeah. the deep. I'll save my question too. <laughs> yeah, save the good stuff for the recording. Right. Yeah, it's too easy to banter. Let's just get the interview out of the way before we start. Yeah. (laughs) And let's talk about Star Wars, you know? Welcome to the Newgrounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Zinzinix. And then Spades, if you want to lead us in. Hello, Newgrounds. Welcome to the Newgrounds Audio Podcast. And today we have your extra special co-host, myself, Spadeser, and we got Zinzinix. Yeehaw! Hey, Zin. And we also got Jacob in here. What's up? Yep, so we got... This is a not a usual version for the podcast. Um, this time we get a first ever producer slash music content creator. We have a special guest, Boom Kitty, on here. Say hello. Hello, what is up? Yo, what <laughs> up, man? I'm your biggest fan. Are you? I don't think you are, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> oh, shit. You don't recognize me? <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> One day. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not I'm not used to hosting a lot, um, so I'm just kind of winging it. I guess we'll just go straight into the interview for uh, lack of not knowing what etiquettes or I knew it was there. bad having you host yeah. this episode. Let's do this right. Let's do this right. Boom Kitty, in- introduce yourself, Boom Kitty. Who are you? And then like what do you like to do? Uh well, my name's Eric, but most of you know me as Boom Kitty. Um I make music and I like to do that. So uh I plan to continue doing that. Nice. Um let's see what else. I play video games. I like cats. Just getting the obvious stuff out of the way. Um that's good. I guess that's basically <laughs> it. That's that's the sum up of my life. So perfect. Video games about cats. Mm. I got it. That's what you're getting yeah, for Christmas. Totally. I like cats. I like Something about like auto tuned cats is what I caught that time. <laughs> I uh, I do use auto tune sometimes. I've yet to tune my cats though. So maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good question, actually. What do you like to sample the most when it comes to music, Boom Kitty? Is it your own voice or is it like other people's um, voices? Because I've I've listened to some of your music, obviously. Yeah, yeah. For so. This. I don't really do my own sampling or recording. I'm just going to assume I'm going to I'm going to speak as if no one knows anything about how music is made just to make it accessible to everybody. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I just get a lot of sample packs, which is just samples that other people make like little audio audio files uh, because I could record stuff myself. But that's just, uh, you know, a lot of effort, a lot of unnecessary yeah. effort. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to answer your question, the only thing I do record is my voice most of the time so yes that's my favorite thing to sample if that's what you mean by sampling. So, <laughs> yeah i, I yeah. guess that's what i mean by sampling i'm glad you dumbed it down enough for me because i literally don't know how audio works at all or making music works so that i appreciate that a lot i just assumed you like pulled voices off of other people or like someone recorded something i do that live too, okay clear. okay yeah because that's okay. also what's going to be interesting about this episode is you got myself and jacob where like we're kind of the producers in this group um, and usually this podcast interviews um, like animators and video artists and like Newgrounds, just general Newgrounds content creators. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's good that we have like an understanding that we're going to be reaching a wide audience of those who not only know like the intricacies of how to make an automated wavetable. And but then you have other people who are like, what? What's a waveform? Is yeah, it yeah, a pair? Yeah. <laughs> so you and uh, to be clear, you. And Jacob both make music. Yeah. Produce color. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Wait, you're telling me you haven't listened to Jacob's or Spazer's music? What? Oh, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, kidding. You got to call me out like that publicly, man? Yeah, top, oh. top five favorite musicians. Go. You got three seconds. Uh, <laughs> far Too Loud is one. Yes. God, that's that's probably it. That's <laughs> oh, not even virtual, right? Oh, man. Virtual, right? It's good. The thing is, I'm like, I, I like listening to like, I have like two songs from all my favorite artists. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't have one artist that I listen to like all the yeah. time. Yeah, I know what you mean. My playlist is all over the place, but I got like at least like five or 10 artists. It's like, oh yeah, this is good. I need to share this with people. Exactly. <laughs> um, it, it's uh, far, I always go to Far Too Loud just because he's my biggest inspiration from when I started Boom Kitty. 
So it's just like the, my go to answer. That's beautiful. Well, the other funny thing is like when I pitched the idea in the first place, like, hey guys, let's have Boom Kitty on the podcast. Everyone's like, shoot, who's Boom Kitty? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah like he's a super popular guy that got a beat saber Tell yeah. Him that. <laughs> yeah and that's a whole whole other story yeah which actually this is the perfect time to get into the story of like how did you get into music in the first place or newgrounds how did you even get to newgrounds okay well this is gonna be like a 10 minute answer so uh hell buckle yeah your buckle like, in perfect Hit all it. right so first thing people need to know is i'm, I'm pretty old i'm i'm 27 Wow, you're old? Holy cow. Yeah, I'm 25. What are you trying to say, man? Like, yeah, man. Whoa, you're uh, younger than me. Come on. Wait, I'm getting... Wait, really? Well, yeah. Yeah, Jacob's oh, an good. infant, okay. though, so... Yeah. <laughs> so, so my perspective is always that I'm old just because my fan base is very young. So uh, I'm actually very glad you guys are around my age. That's good to know. Yeah, we can have so, intelligent exactly. conversations here. If you want to talk about the stock market <laughs> later, just hit me up. Oh, dude. We'll talk about politics. <laughs> So as far as Newgrounds, so I, I discovered Newgrounds in probably like 2002, just from like Flash games and stuff. And then, uh, and you know, of course, I discovered the porn on it in like 2004. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> why is that? Why is that? <laughs> why is that always tandem to Newgrounds yep. origin stories? Was uh, I found Newgrounds and then I found porn? Yeah, and he already figured out Newgrounds way before I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's good. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I, I feel like I was pretty early, but I don't know. I don't even know when Newgrounds was at its peak. Unless it's now, which I hope it is, but real <laughs> talk, real now. talk. So I got into making music. Uh, I'm trying to think how to order this story, but I'll get to everything. This I might just be a little jumbled for a bit. So yeah. I started making music in 2005, 2004. Yeah, 2005. I knew about the Newgrounds audio portal, but I didn't really use it. A bunch of my friends and I were into Newgrounds. And uh, one of my friends in particular named Evan... He uh, he actually does my a lot of my artwork or does a lot of my graphic design. I've we've been friends for a super long time. He's also my he was my neighbor growing up. He lived across the street from me. So him and I really liked Newgrounds, and uh, we would like look at the music there. We were obsessed with Paragon X Nine. We we're like, oh, Paragon yeah. X Nine released a new song, yo! Yeah. Oh my god, that's literally Newgrounds. <laughs> Paragon X Nine. Everyone freaking out over that. Paragon X Nine. What you had like F Triple Seven and Water Flame, <laughs> right? Those were all at the same time, right? Yeah, I remember Water Flame was, we, we loved Water Flame back in the day. I remember I liked this guy, DJ Comet. And what's cool is that DJ Comet in like 2000, I don't know, like 15, sent me a message on SoundCloud saying he loves my music. Oh my oh, God. Like stuff like that. <laughs> like, it's so cool when your young inspirations like acknowledge you, you know? Or even better, it's kind of, it sounds kind of like overly competitive, but it's even better when you surpass your uh, your old idols. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well, especially like that that time when it's just like I could never make something this like this fucking cool, and then you listen back to their music and you're like, ah, yeah, they should have compressed this better. And <laughs> real talk, yeah. As soon as you can start listening to like music you used to love and like realize like, oh, I could I could probably make it make this make this a little better. Like that's a good feeling. Is it is it fair to say that because of Newgrounds' like audio portal, you were influenced like a lot into getting into music, or were you already starting off with music before you, you and your buddies got onto Newgrounds? So let me tell the story of how I got into music. So I'll say no. I, I got into music before I cared about the Newgrounds really, really audio quick. portal. What was the first program you used to make music with? I'll get into that in this okay. story. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, we'll get there. The way I first got into music, 2005. So I was always like kind of into music growing up, like really, you know, like seven years old to like 11 years old. I started when I was 12, but uh, I wasn't like obsessed with electronic music. You know, it was very small back in the day. Keep in mind, I started before EDM got big in 2010. I started in 2005. So like there wasn't like, you know, there's no YouTube. It wasn't tutorials. Like it was hard to find information, hard to find. And the artists just, right. the music wasn't as good as it is today, just, just factually, objectively. But I always like kind of liked the idea of electronic music. Like I didn't listen to it much, but I was like, oh, it'd be cool if there was a song that was like boom, 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 or whatever. You know, <laughs> my young self. And then uh, at one point, I think when I was in sixth grade, I remember like kind of thinking like, oh, it'd be cool to make electronic music. And what happened is that there was this summer camp. So I grew up near Boston. There was this summer camp called Imagination. And uh, my brother went there. My brother's a big programmer and he's been doing that for a long time. So this is like a nerd computer camp. The way the com the camp works is that you like pick a pick a few courses to take, and then it's like like it could be Photoshop, animation. Flash was big back in the day. Now it's you know it's dead, but I actually took a Flash class there years later. But so my brother took an electronic music class, 
it's at a summer camp. So he comes home one day from this summer camp and he shows me two songs that he made. And I was like blown away. I'm like, how did you make these? I want to know how to make these. These songs are cool. Like, show me what you did. <laughs> so he shows me. So the software was called Acid Music Studio. It was made by Sony at the time. It's still being updated. Now it's owned by Magix, but it it's not very good software. But that's what I started on. So he just showed me the software. I got the software. I got like the free version where you can only have like 10, 10 sounds. I just became obsessed like as a kid. I was just like making music nonstop. And um, the way I'd made, made music at that time is I just found samples because this is what my brother did. So I was just doing what my brother showed me how to do, which is just using samples, which is just audio files and like layering them, them on each other and chopping them up and stuff. I didn't even know what MIDI was for years. So it was all, I was just doing all samples. So I'll get to this more later probably, but a lot of how I make music now is very similar to how I made music then where I, I really like using a lot of audio and chopping it up and stuff. Now I just kind of think that way. And I think it actually had a really good effect on my music now because I got pretty good at taking like random sounds and finding a way to use them well. Not in like, not in like, I'm not claiming to be like, oh, use this like random hit of like a pan or in some, in some unique way. Guys, I found a drop and it was with the kitchen pans and like some tongs. So it's great. Exactly. It's <laughs> for me, it's, it was always more like, I just like could hear when it, uh, I got good at hearing like, oh, this sound is kind of weird, but I could see how it could sound good in this context. Uh, I see what you mean. So, so I was making music in acid music studio for like three years. And there was this website called acid planet which sounds like, you know, some weird drug, uh, <laughs> yeah. drug form. But, uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like Pizza Planet, but cool, man. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was really putting all my music on Acid Planet uh, for a while. And, you know, Acid Planet, shittiest website ever. It was so, like, ugly, you know, it was 2005. So, and then at some point, I don't know, like, I, I had known about Newgrounds. I was using Newgrounds. I knew about the audio portal. Then my friend Evan and I, I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to start putting everything on Newgrounds now. So I actually have an old Newgrounds account that has music from like 2007 to 2010 um, that I haven't revealed what the name was. And I'm still not going to. Oh, you're not going to? All right. No, all right. All right. <laughs> We're uh, scavenger hunt. Someone find that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tweeted a while ago. I said, when I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I will reveal what my old account was. So. Oh, yes. How many are you at right now? Uh, 75,000. So oh, sick. Nice, nice. We'll get there. We'll get there. So if you're listening to this, go subscribe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On this Newgrounds podcast, let's plug a YouTube subscription right now. And while you're at it, subscribe yeah. to the Newgrounds podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Or those are humble origin stories. You and a bunch of acid heads just making music on a, on a forum. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of drug addicts. <laughs> We're like, yo, dude, let's, let's not talk about music. Let's talk about life. <laughs> I I I'm gonna, I want to go into like how I made Boom Kitty and stuff. That cool? Like oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. But I want to I want to ask real I want to ask real quick though. Does your older brother still make music though? Is no, no, no. That... He stops immediately. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> He's a programmer. He he makes games. He he worked on actually. Uh, he worked on Halo Five out of college. Oh, sure, yeah. Dang. And uh, then he worked at Google, and now he's making his own game. I'm actually working on that game with him. I'm doing audio for it, so that's another thing. Oh my oh, god, it's that's beautiful. Awesome. I, I can actually plug that right now if you guys don't mind. Go for it. Please do. Um, the company is called, I mean, a company, it's a few people, but it's called Second Pass Studios. We're working, making this game called Time Wreck Tales. So if you want to just look up Second Pass Studios, follow us on social media. We're not big at all. It's like, and we're not, our social media presence isn't big, but. To cry to help um, to get bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> What's the concept of the game? If you're going to plug it, I want to know what it's about. Okay, I'll give a short version because. Um, Yay. I uh, I'm much more passionate about you know the audio side of things, but right, but the game right. is uh it's a roguelike RPG, mobile RPG. So you know roguelike means like you play it over and over, and you, you're supposed to die a lot. Right. But uh, it's interesting because it's it's heavy on dialogue. So it's like you make a party, you meet new characters. You every run you can have new characters, but it's like dialogue heavy. So you're like interacting. Your different skills open different dialogue options, stuff like that. And then it's like turn turn based combat with a party like. Almost like the old Final Fantasy games, which I didn't oh. really play. But oh god, Final Fantasy music is iconic too. So the fact that you're the musician for this is that's actually oh, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> so I should clarify: a lot of people will be disappointed if they're fans, but I'm not doing the music. I'm only doing the sound effects. Oh, oh cool. shit! That's, that's still yeah. really interesting, though. 
Because that's its whole market, and that's a whole different ideology, if that's the right word. Yeah, it's a totally different, um, not totally different skill set, but it's, it's very different. Obviously, there's some overlap, but but yeah, it's a very different skill set. That's actually why I'm doing it, because I want to learn those skills. And then also, um, um, I'm actually getting into game music, which is, uh, that's a whole can of worms. I might wait to to talk more about that, if that's cool. Yeah, yeah um, roger cool. that. All right, Boom Kitty origin story. Who are you? How did you design yourself? What's going on there? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so let me continue how I got into music. Yeah. And got into Newgrounds. So, yeah, around like 2007, I started making music 2005. Around 2007, I started put, putting it on Newgrounds. Um, I was still using Acid Music Studio. 2009, I went to that summer camp, but I went to like the overnight version yeah, where you make a game. It was like a game camp. They showed us FL Studio. That's when I, I, I made the switch to FL Studio, which was definitely a good call. That's when I actually realized what a synthesizer was, how MIDI works, that, oh, making music isn't just stacking audio files. To, to anyone listening, so uh, who doesn't know about this, a synthesizer is basically just like a piece of software that generates a sound from nothing. So like using an audio file is when you like takes a melody someone else made or a sound someone else made and just like layer them together. Whereas Those are what we call samples, right? Exactly what we call samples, yeah. Whereas uh, synthesis is actually like going into software and like adjusting, like oh, make this sound, make this wave oscillate in this way at this frequency, and you're generating a sound like through like you know tools, and then you can write a melody with that. So like you say, oh, play a C through this synthesizer, then play a D through this synthesizer, and that's how you actually make more sounds from scratch. So that's when I discovered synthesis. At the time, I was just using presets. Way later, I actually figured out how to you know, do sound design and stuff. But so that's how I got FL Studio. Okay, so how does this go? All right, so FL Studio, you went to overnight camp. Yeah. Yes, that's how I found FL Studio. And then? I'm trying to I'm trying to decide where to begin this. So in oh, 2000, God. what? Your origin stories, they're complex, man. No, it <laughs> is. <laughs> they're deep people. Musicians, really deep. It's a man who pulls from a lot of inspirations, apparently. I know. I love <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in high school, I went to a vocational high school, which means um, you like choose like a vocation. Then one week you have academics, you know, English, math, whatever. And then the next week you have whatever your vocation is. So carpentry. It's kind of like a trade school. It, it was a trade school. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a just different, different word for a trade school. Vocational school, trade school. Trade school might be after high school. This was part of high school, to yeah. be clear. Yeah. Got it. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I went to that vocational high school and then I did computer computer tech there. And I had an awesome computer tech teacher who was like, look, Eric, if you want to come in and just work on music, that's totally cool. Like, because there was no computer or no music trade or whatever. That was amazing. I, I really love that my teacher was uh, so lenient about that. So I, I joined the computer science vocation in high school, but I ended up starting to do programming because, you know, it was still part of the curriculum, but he was just like, you know, whenever, whenever we're not doing programming, you just do whatever you want. So I started getting into programming. I was still doing music, but I became a lot less passionate about it in high school. So high school for me was 2007 to 2011. Also, at this time, I started playing drums. 2007 or 2006, oh, I started playing drummer, drums. Oh, fellow drummer, heck yeah. Fellow drummer. Oh, you play drums too? Yeah, but we'll oh, talk man. about that later. Same. Okay. <laughs> Word, dude. That's, that's going, great sorry. to hear. <laughs> so, okay. So that's when I started playing drums a lot. And then I got really into metal. I was playing in a ton of bands. Um, and I thought drums was like my thing. That was my thing in through high school. So I was, I was a little less about the computer music. I was still doing it, but it was more uh, playing drums and bands. So in computer tech, especially when I had to start thinking about college, you know, junior and senior year, this was 2010. So this is when EDM started exploding. And uh, this is actually one of the biggest regrets of my life is that like it was around that time, 2009 through 2011 is when I really put com- electronic music to the side to like think about programming and think about having a normal career. You know, so many artists got big in that time when EDM was exploding, all these people who started around when I did. So like Porter Robinson is the biggest example. He's a huge EDM artist. He started, we, him and I are almost the same age. He started, we started making music at about the exact same time, but he was like ready for the EDM boom. He was making music, working on it, releasing it, where I was just kind of like, I didn't even know it was happening. I didn't even know this thing was going on. He got like a Grammy or something like that, right? He did. Under the name... Um... Virtual Cell? Yes. Yeah, I, I guess. I, I didn't know about the Grammy, but yeah. I mean, he's so big. It's like, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so that's one of my biggest regrets is that I, I really like put my one of my passions to the side to just be like, well, programming makes money. Anyway, I went to, uh, and then I went to college and I was doing computer science. That was my major. 
I had totally forgotten about music. I wasn't even making music. I was playing drums still a little bit, but not much. I was in the marching band. That was like my connection with music still. Yes. And the worst part is, is that the school I went to, it was uh, UMass Lowell in Massachusetts. It had a really good music program and a really good, it had a sound recording technology degree program, but I just didn't do it. I was just, I thought about doing it, but then I was just like, no, I'm just going to do programming, make money when, I, when I'm out of college. Biggest regret, one of the biggest regrets of my life, dude. So what happened here is that in marching band, there was this girl who uh, was really into EDM and I, I was getting into EDM at the time, you know, like the new EDM, like Dead Mouse, all the people, who, Skrillex, all the people who were blowing up. Yeah. And, uh, and it, like, her, I, I told her, I was like, yo, you know, I used to make music. I still do occasionally. <laughs> She's like, oh, we should like pull oh, out on a song. <laughs> to impress Uh-oh. a girl. That's the best motivation. Hold well, on. <laughs> <laughs> let me be clear <laughs> let me be clear i know it sounds like that but there was none of that in this case she was oh you know she was fine but but it, i wasn't doing it to impress her. i was doing i was doing it genuinely because i was like we both really liked music and it was just like oh i just brought brought the spark back <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> and i'm not lying okay <laughs> yeah it, it inspired you it just happened to be a female <laughs> okay exactly. okay exactly. so Zid was trying to spin it. <laughs> well, I feel like I feel like a lot of motivations are from females. I'm like, this makes a lot of sense. I get this. I'm like, I got to stay. It would have been so funny. It would have been funny actually. You could spin it that way. So hold on, hold on. So okay, let me show be her clear. the music, and then and then you're like, oh my god, she's like, ah, oh, this is awesome, and then you decided to pursue it. Well, it, I'll I'll get into that, but I first I want to address to make you guys believe me. I'll tell you right now. Let me be clear, <laughs> woman. Girls, definitely a huge yeah. motivation for me on why I make music. No, I'm not going to lie. Of course. <laughs> That's great. That was like half the reason I played drums in high school too. That was like why I got a girlfriend in high school. That was the only reason. Like she was impressed with my drumming. She was like a rocker chick. Hell yeah. My one high school oh, I'm surprised it wasn't guitar. Babe. You'd think the guitar would be the one to get all the girls. I mean, if I think you're if you're good at music in general, it doesn't matter what you play. If you're good, like people, people have Girls yeah, are impressed. Shout by out it, to you know? all the females okay. inspiring musicians out there. All of you beautiful females. Yo. There you go. Dude, you imagine guys, how you guys are half the reason the world spins. <laughs> <laughs> imagine how terrible all the male artists would be if they weren't trying to if they were all like gay or something, you know? <laughs> well, we're editing that out. <laughs> Music what? would be so bad. <laughs> Duh, you're impressing dudes. There's nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> yeah, but it's just so much easier to impress dudes. Like it's you know, it's not the same. It wouldn't be as good. Oh, you love my hearing my loud car. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah. So you met this chick. Yes. It was a pl- platonic, yeah, so I met platonic relationship. Completely yeah, platonic. Totally platonic. So she was like, uh, we should totally collab on a song. And then, so we, we like open FL studio, like just sit side by side. And I like, dude, it just brought back my passion. Like so huge. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so like I started just like using FL Studio in my spare time to making music again. And this is when I made, uh, you guys probably didn't see this, but on my YouTube and Newgrounds, like my first three songs is like Jam Rat Shatter in the Floor. Those are the songs I made in this time in 2011 in college, just like in my free time in my freshman year. So I made those songs and then I was like, I was thinking about music more. And then sophomore year is when I just like, I just like, I just went all in on music. So sophomore year, this is, I'll get into far too loud. I found this artist far too loud. And like when I was young, you know, I remember when I was young, I was, I would always like imagine music. Like I said, and like, I felt like the music that I wanted to exist, it didn't exist. And then I heard far too loud. And I'm like, this is music that I wish existed. Like it's, it's just so cool. Like it's, it's such awesome, like just badass bass in your face. Just sounds like you can dance to it. Makes you hype, makes you energized. Like I'll give the I'll give some example songs. This song I really loved was a uh, mega loud. So look up far too loud, yeah, mega yeah. loud, mega, mega loud. loud. Um, that song was like a huge a huge one. Is it um, wait boom boom kitty? Is it safe to assume you were going to concerts at this time, or was most of what you were uh, influenced by just from the digital age of being online and EDM, you know, and in streaming? Definitely the digital age. I barely went to concerts. Okay. Yeah, barely. So you can't do that on a college budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you would have been you would have been too busy to take like some. Well, 
people. I didn't even think about fun. going to live shows. Honestly, I didn't like care that much. It's, so. See, it's really big now because when I was when, back like three years ago when I was in college, a lot of my uh, fraternity buddies, they would go to live shows of EDM shows and do stuff like that. And there's actually a big club in Michigan where uh, they, they just play EDM like every every weekend they have artists on stage. So it is it is relatively big. That's why like when I listen to a lot of EDM, I wonder if you could actually just be a musician, you know, just go out there, and play concerts, you know? Yeah, so I mean, well, this is a whole thing. It's 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 weird. The live people who love to see live shows is not the same people who love to listen to music online. Like, obviously, there's a lot of overlap. But I'll give a quick example. I'll, I'll get back to my Boom Kitty origin, right? Um, but I'll go into this first. So yeah, yeah I'll remember to bring it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we did. Um, I did a show. I had I had a manager. I guess he's still my manager, but we haven't talked in months. He got married and stuff, so it was like a whole thing. But I did a show in November in uh, Seattle, you know, before the pandemic and stuff. And, you know, I know like we, my manager and I did like a bunch of like scouting and we saw, you know, there's a lot of people who go to EDM shows. A lot of artists who are a lot smaller than me would draw in like decent crowds, you know, a hundred people, whatever. Oh, interesting. But I did a show. We planned it all ourselves. It wasn't like hosted by another like organization or anything. Um, The only people who showed up were our friends and our friends of friends. So the fact that I have whatever i had like seventy thousand monthly listeners at the time on spotify i had like fifty thousand youtube subscribers and despite all that nobody showed up even though i know i have fans in seattle that says a lot about my audience like my audience is like gamers geometry dash kids people who are under 21 right. you know it's a 21 plus show gotcha gotcha the the people who go see live shows it is really interesting what a what a split there is and that, that's like my biggest example it's just my exper- experience with that yeah, they're kind of different EDM communities because they're the people, you know, who like to dress up in the in like the neon outfits <laughs> and, you know, the hula hoop, you know, you yeah. Gandalf with and those are like the live go-yos. show junkies. Right. Exactly. You know, they love to like just yeah. trip, <laughs> you know, and go to the show. And then there are the introverted listeners or like the gamers or like, you know, most of the time when I'm listening to EDM, it's alone in my room. Right. Right. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Or when you're pl- when you're playing uh, when you're playing Rocket League or something like you- your favorite video game, you're going to throw on your favorite EDM artist or when you're drawing or et cetera. Or et cetera. Right. Shoot, I have it as my I have them all on my work playlist. So I'll be doing my work and then just head banging it with the stuff in the background right so it's interesting to know your demographic audience then I, I never i never realized that. that that makes a lot of sense it's a very different experience of the music it's very interesting how like for example the dubstep community is very live centric like if you're a small dubstep artist and you you have if you have 100 fans in a city like 80 of them i mean i'm exaggerating but so many of them will show up to your show because that's like what the dubstep community is more focused on they love like the headbanging the being there like headbanging in sync you know whereas like my music it doesn't doesn't draw that like that live passion yeah i'm glad you got to experience that to understand a little bit more about like how to market yourself that's interesting so we're at 2009 boom kitty what's going on there we got we got loud so loud wait what, what's his name again we got loud. boom kitty who's so a sophomore year who decided to go all in into music yeah, so I'll, I'll explain kind of what started happening. I, I I was I was doing really well in school before that, um, I, and then I started. I went from doing really well to like from three point nine GPA to like three point four. I, I like started like oh, I wasn't so taking. <laughs> so I always tell people because some people make fun of me. They're like, "Oh, you dropped out of college." I'm like, "I didn't drop out. I, I left. Like I was doing fine. I just chose to leave. So like it's not like I failed. Like but anyway." I, I did start focusing a lot less on class and I started really like, I would stay up late in FL studio. I would learn a lot. I was, wa- I was watching videos all the time. I was big into uh, their subreddit, reddit.com r slash EDM production. And they would do like meetups twice a week with this website where you could like take turns playing music. It was like a chat room where like one person was playing a song at a time. So, you know, we'd share our music and talk about it, get feedback. Oh that was huge because I... So I had a community and that's super important. And if uh, I'd love to talk about like how to advice to stay inspired and stuff. Yes, please. Wait, can you please just for a moment? Because a lot of people uh, face inspiration issues all the time or like just (laughs) finding a way to to stay creatively like inspired, like doing that through a community. That was genius of you. Just having like people to rely on and play your music in front of to receive like pot. Well, like actual criticism because you had people who weren't going to sugarcoat anything to you. Yeah, my answer to how to stay inspired is like another 10 minute answer. Um, I'd rather finish the I'm almost done with the life story. So, okay. 
my inspiration answer is really like I go I go hard on that answer. So I've done it a few times. So that's why I want to. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so so you've had this. You found the EDM community. Yeah, and then that's when I was learning everything. I started learning how to synthesize, how to do synthesis. I was learning like, oh, what is side chaining, which is it's not important, but <laughs> it's an important part of music to uh, people who don't know. Uh, that's when I was learning hard, and that's when I remember the biggest moment I had was when I made my song 1077 because that was the first song where I really felt like I had, I had found that sound that I was really looking for, like a cool, just Quick in your face. When you put that, that, that was the first song I found of you. And that's when I learned who you were. Like that was my first song of yours. I still have it in my playlist. Oh, hell, thanks, dude. When, when was that? I'm just curious. 2014. Okay, sweet. But that's also another story that we can get into later. So. Yeah, sure. I'm curious. Uh, yes, I made 1077 in that time. And then I actually made like Mojave Radio and Basilisk Wardroid after that. It's fine if any of you don't know those songs. Um, But I, I released them before 1077. So yeah, I was really... I remember the feeling I had when I made 1077. It was like, when you are struggling to make something good, and you make something that is genuinely like, impresses yourself, not like you like pretend it's good or like you lie to yourself, when you genuinely know you've made something awesome... It's hard to describe how good that feels, like if you haven't experienced it. And right. I think I kind of I'm a little addicted to that feeling, which is a good thing to be addicted to. You know, it's one of the good things. So yeah, so I think that's basically my origin story. And then I just started working hard on Boom Kitty. So uh, one more thing, and then the next year, halfway through junior year, I left school. Oh, actually, God, there's a whole another story. I'll try to I'll try to give a quick version. It's of Boom it. Kitty Part Two now. <laughs> yeah, Boom Kitty Part Two. So I almost gave up on music gave up on boom kitty specifically like to the 2014 to 2015 around then because that was before i got big it was like end of 2015 i started growing a lot oh, okay i almost gave up and i started like looking thinking about going back to college and stuff just because i wasn't growing but i was also like feeling less passion i went through this huge depress depressive phase i consider myself lucky because since i had been posting my music to newgrounds one of my songs bass night just started getting used in geometry dash so that song just started getting views randomly and I didn't even like know what was happening. I didn't even know what Geometry Dash was, but I just remember like checking my YouTube and like, you know, it, now it's small, but at the time it was like, oh, 20,000 views on YouTube. I was like, what's going Dude, on? Like I've never gotten it, man. Yeah. No, I mean, when you're starting, like, I mean, every, every milestone counts. And like at the time it was so exciting. I was like, well, I don't know what's happening. I was like, well, I actually have a fan base now. You know, it's really small, a few hundred people, but it was enough that I was like, people, there was people asking me like, hey, when's your next song coming out? When you get that initial, like just a just a small number of people who care. God, it's such a motivator. Right. So, so then I got back into making music, and then I, I went hard again. I, I'd say 2018. I mean, I went. I started working hard in 2016, Badland and stuff. That was when GD was like, my music was exploding in GD. But yeah, 2018 is when I was like, I really like felt like I was managing my time properly, and you know, uh, okay, being an adult who treats this like a job and actually makes music. Like I was streaming and like thinking about business plans and stuff. So yeah, that's my that's my origin story uh, in a nutshell. So sorry for the 30 minute answer, but no, I mean, sorry. This is the whole point of the show. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for giving us that. A lot, of, a lot of early musicians don't know how to feel about making music in general or where to go. So let's talk about inspiration. You said depression. So you, you drew from drew from Geometry Dash. So shout out to the, the shithole that became Geometry Dash after a while. <laughs> we will make fun of yeah. Geometry Dash, but as much as we make fun of it, it's still a huge proponent for making a lot of people like who they are. Exactly. Geometry Dash is weird. It's definitely um, the community can be pretty bad, um, but <laughs> but it's still a great game for. I don't I don't actually like the game that much because I don't. It's kind of stupid. I don't like insta fail because for me it's more about the music, the rhythm aspect. So like when you insta fail, you can't really enjoy the song because it's like what what, the, what, the, what Geometry Dash is as a game is finding the part you're bad at and playing that over and over till you can do it consistently. Find the next part you're bad at, play it over and over till you can do it consistently. So you're only listening to small parts of the song at a time. Whereas a game like Beat Saber, like you're listening to the whole song as you play. Like you'll uh, fail. You could also get into the right. same type of thing. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's same thing with Guitar Hero, you know, where like you're experiencing this whole song, even if you don't do well. Yeah, you exactly. Know, you're going through it. 100%. So... Geometry Dash is a great game, to be clear, but uh, it's it's just not for me. But yeah, the community while while the community can be kind of toxic, and you know the game has its problems. It's 
I think it's amazing that it's such a great combination, especially with its link to Newgrounds, of how yeah. art can be combined with music. So like now, it's kind of a silly example, but my my song PP song, the April Fool's joke. Like yeah. I worked with uh, a more. Oh, you asked on one that. of the questions. <laughs> this was a listed question. We were definitely going to ask about how PP song, like what it was and how it came about. So you actually you answered part of it. I'll tell you how it came about really quick. I, I was literally, I was just during a live stream where I was making music on YouTube. The people during- who are asking, we'll uh, we'll link the song into the chat so people can catch up if they need to. <laughs> Wait, what, what are they asking? Uh, what is PP song? <laughs> Uh, so PP Song's just a, a song I made on April Fool's Day this year, 2020, uh, or released that day with a music video. And the way it started was just like two months earlier, I just made this, I was doing something called a Daily 30, where I just spend 30 minutes making something new every day. So I just, during that, I just made that melody. Dun, 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 And then I was like, God, it's such a silly melody. And then I found this like water sound, like like sounds like someone peeing, but it was just like a water stream sound. I put it at the start. I'm like, all right, this is a PP, PP daily 30. And then <laughs> I was like, you know, April Fool's Day is coming up. Why don't I just make this into a full song? It could be pretty funny. And then I met a more ultra just randomly in my server. Someone like introduced me to him. And then he showed me a level he made. And I was like, wow, this level is really awesome. A GD level. Then, uh, then we started, he started working on the level. And I was like, oh, I should do a music video. Cause I actually knew a videographer from oh. from making connections actually for the live show for that live show we wanted to film it or like just get pictures for promotion oh, so okay. to know this video guy who is now sort of a friend i'm still i'm still friends with him i talk to him still we got contact me and my manager contacted my manager's the the other the guy driving the music video and the woman is his wife so yeah we made the music video and the rest is history so that's the origin of pp song is, is this the only song you've had made uh, with a music video yes, yes. i find that funny <laughs> yeah. Oh, Will Kmar. Will Kmar uh, was wondering whether you were wanting to like sort of move toward stuff like that. Uh, more, uh, what was the word that he used? There it is, persona based. I said, are you going to transition uh, into being more of a persona based EDM pop artist? Uh, what does that mean exactly? Persona. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's why I just said it verbatim because I'm not. I'll try. Sure. I'll try to. I'll try to interpret <laughs> it. Like that's a difficult question. Are you going to be like basically? being boom kitty like like how you have like uh dead mouth like that's that's a persona you know what i mean he's you imagine him with the the mask on or the the mm. the, the rat not not rat face it sounds fucked up mouse head or the mouse head or whatever you want to call yeah, it mouse head. Yeah. would you yeah. would you want to transition into being like boom kitty like you are the the like the persona boom kitty funnily enough i think i'm doing the exact opposite where i'm trying to be more eric like i used to never tell people my name now i do all the time Oh, and interesting. Not, not worry too much about whatever like i mean i want to have good branding like good artwork but i'm not too worried about like oh boom kitty is this mysterious like that logo like i want i just want to handle the business side well and focus on the music not, <laughs> what is not this monster cat, cat ripoff i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> wait can we wait we went we went over boom kitty origin stories but what about your logo what's with the with the boom kitty logo I mean, it's it's nothing fancy. I'll tell you how I got my name. It was just I was just like, oh, I was talking to my brother. Um, this is on my web. I have a website, by the way, with a lot of this info. But um, just talking to my brother one day, and I was like, okay, I need a new alias. What should it be? Um, I like cats. Can you help me figure something out? I like, I want like he- heavy music. So at some point, we just landed on Boom Kitty. So yeah, that's how I got my name. And then the logo, I was just I had a friend who did artwork, not Evan, but another friend. And I was just like, hey, can you draw me a logo? And he drew like a bunch of just random stuff. And then he, he came, just came up with the Boom Kitty logo. So that's how I got my logo. <laughs> it wasn't like... Nice, simple. It wasn't very well thought out. Just, oh, that looks cool. Okay. What year would you say that was? 2012, late 2012. 20, because... Ah, oh, you're so close. Okay. <laughs> Monster Cat was 2011. I was just, I was going to see if you beat him. Yeah, I didn't even know about Monster Cat till like a few months into having started Boom Kitty. So, um yeah but yeah the names are definitely similar so so back to inspiration because i feel like we keep tiptoeing into this and then we keep getting distracted from it yeah yeah (laughs) um i guess let's just restart (laughs) yeah inspiration inspiration what what do you do for inspiration what inspires you you just listen to so far loud and then you're like okay i got the energy again (laughs) do you read some comments from from your fans like what you play video games you play a good video game like i want to fucking make a soundtrack to this or some shit like what what do you do for inspiration what do you love about music and well, first what of all, helps you i love how you change far too loud's name every time oh thank you so, so far loud <laughs> i love <laughs> that too <laughs> so far loud 
So I do get, so I'll talk about inspiration and I'll talk about motivation and I'll kind of match the two. Sweet. So inspiration, I do mostly get inspired, I'd say, by video game music and uh, like movie music, trailer music, stuff like that. I find every so often I'll get inspired by like a song that's released, like a normal EDM song. But funnily enough, I don't actually like like most EDM that gets released. I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be an elitist or anything. It's just like genuinely, I'm just like, this is kind of cool, but like it's not that cool. But then you hear a song that's like in a trailer, the hype, or like in a video game. Like right now, I'm playing Cyberpunk, obviously, yeah. like everyone. And like the music in that game is so damn good. It's it's crazy how good it is. When I he- when I'm like shooting people up and I hear some of the songs, I'm like, wow, this is like really fucking cool. Like it's so that that really inspires me. <laughs> but that that kind of inspiration that you get from like listening to music where you feel a, a like a rush. Like it, it's not actually that important. Like it is important, but it's pretty easy to get. So it's not something I need to give advice on. So I might be a little all over the place. It's going to be like another 10 minute answer. Right, so. right. I, I really okay. like how you said that though. A lot of people don't understand that. Oh, you see art and it makes you want to draw, but that's, it's like a small high, you know, it's that quick high, but like what inspires you beyond that, you know? Exactly. I'm glad you, you know, you realize that. Cause that's something a lot of people me- kind of mess up. So being inspired, I think, is the most important thing for making music because, and this sounds hypocritical, but I'll, I'll explain why it's not. Because if you want to make good music, or this isn't just a music, if you want to do anything well, you want to do anything better than everyone else, or a- as good as everyone else at the minimum, like as good as the pros, you need to be inspired by it. You need to want to do it in your free time. You can't just... I mean, you can in theory, you can treat it like work as long as you have a good work ethic and like eight hours a day, that's it. But like, if you want to do eight hours a day and not get burnt out, you need to be inspired. So the question is, how can you be inspired as often as possible and as long as possible? Hmm. And the thing is, that high you get from listening to a good song is such a tiny part of the equation. And people will feel that high and they won't use it effectively. Well, yeah, because like for a producer... You, you don't get the high just at like when you listen to a song, you're getting the high when you're like, you're making each section of the song and then you make a revision and like each time, like each four days or I won't say four days, each like four hours you spend at a song, we'll say it's like, that's another new like hype moment. It's like, oh shoot, I made this. This is cool. Oh crap. I just found out this new melody, right? Exactly. So, so making music does create inspiration. The, the, a big problem people have though, is that when you're bad at making music, you start like when you're new, you make music and it sucks. And you're just like, oh, yeah. I'm not inspired anymore. Because when you tie your inspiration to how good the result is, you're basically fucked. Because then you, one, you don't experiment. I think there's a huge trap so many artists get into. If you if you figure out one style of music, that's good. And I'm, I'm, I'm guil- as guilty of this as anybody, but I do try to change my style and learn new things. Then you start being like, well, I tried this new thing and it wasn't as good. So I'm not inspired anymore. So I don't want to keep trying that new thing. So you get stuck in just doing the same thing over and over, the same style over and over. And you're not innovating anymore. And, and, and even if your style is good, people might still listen to it. But if you want to like... Me, I want to make an impact. I want to create something that people didn't even know they wanted. I want to make something new that people hear and they're like blown away by it. Because like I, I just I, I crave that feeling of showing someone something I made and then being like, "Holy shit, this is amazing!" Yeah. Awesome. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah, that's the dream. So you don't you don't get ever like uninspired from like oh you made something then it receives like not as much reception as you thought it would oh it, I'm not saying it bombed or it tanked but it wasn't as good as what you made it like because you're saying you chase that high of like oh people I don't want to say getting validation from people but but understanding that when you show someone something they're like damn bro this is amazing like obviously you're gonna feel really great from that but what happens if if you don't have anyone that is there for that re- kind of reception, you know? Yeah. Like is, so do you feel good just from making the music? Like, is that... So uh, I'm going to be... I want to be totally upfront because I don't like pretending that I'm better than I am. I I do get in ruts all the time. Like, I go through periods where I just don't want to work on music for months. Like, I still do, but not not nearly as much as I should. But I even... Like, I have the knowledge to know how to get out of those ruts. So I'm able to get out of them when I really choose to. But... Mm. I don't always follow my own advice. Yeah, when when I release a song and if it doesn't get the reception I want, like of course I get uninspired still, like everyone will, but it's just about knowing how to handle those emotions and like control like knowing what's going on, being self-aware enough to say, okay, like it didn't do as well as I hoped, but like, you know, I'm not going to just give up or like feel like shit and like hate myself, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, cuz like right. to interrupt, part of the producer process is like you're not just making this for everyone. Like your goal in life isn't to make music for everyone else. It's 
you are making music because you love making it. Exactly. So I mean, that's like the true reward of the artist is not like how much reception it gets, but just like how much you can provide to the society and being feeling good about it. There's, there's definitely, exactly. There's two, there's two rewards. There's the intrinsic reward of doing the work itself. The satisfaction you get of like, oh, I worked hard today, which is super important. And there, there is the reward of like, I, I, I always say it's more important to impress yourself than other people, because if you like your own music, other people will like it too. Like genuinely like your own music. People lie to themselves all the time. They like, because they made it, they, they listen with like golden ears of like, oh, it's perfect. Like if someone else made it, they wouldn't listen to it. Make music that if someone else made it, you would love it. Like that's what you should be yeah, making. Right. And when you truly impress yourself, I think that's that's one of the biggest rewards. So I'm not against like it's it's weird because you you it's okay it's okay to want the result. It's okay to crave it and like chase it. Like it's yeah, okay. It's, I'm not denying that either. It's not like not getting or getting outside recognition is not a bad thing. I'm not saying that. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't think you were, but it's weird because I, I I say things that sound contradictory. But let me let me go into how to stay motivated, how to stay inspired. Since I believe that the most important thing to doing anything well is to have fun doing it, doing it, excuse me. When you have fun doing something, you just naturally want to spend more time into it. You naturally look for your weak points. You want to get better at it. So the question is, how can you have as much fun as possible making music, especially when you're a beginner and you don't have the results to, to reinforce it? Like, oh, I made something cool. I want to keep making this thing that's cool. It's much easier to stay inspired when you have that. And then when you have a fan base, also much easier because people are like, yo, when's that next song coming out? So that keeps you inspired. So a couple tricks. One, ironically, if you want to have fun doing something, you need to force yourself to do it because people always think, oh, you get motivation and then you work. No, no, no. Working makes motivation. You work, you work for a little while, you spend 30 minutes working, you'll often get motivated where you didn't have motivation. So that's why for a long time, I haven't done this lately, which is my own problem. So I'm actually in college right now. So that's part oh, of why. Interesting. I'm, yeah, I'm studying video game music and audio right now because oh, nice. I'm getting super into that. So I'll go more into detail until that on that later if you guys want um i know uh we're almost at an hour now but don't don't fine. worry about the time we'll just okay. keep going and then make decisions later right zen <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> that always <laughs> works out <laughs> uh so I'm, I'm, i haven't been doing the daily 30s but it is the most important thing i'd say for for anyone wanting to stay motivated and inspired and inspired i was doing this for like two years straight quick clarification because i'm also not familiar with this so like the quick 30 is like you're just spending 30 minutes a day making music yeah i came up with the term daily 30 it's it like call it what you want the important thing is you just set and set some amount of time that you're willing to do no matter how you feel like say no matter how bad i'm feeling no matter how unmotivated i am i'm gonna spend 30 minutes working on music and the way I do it is you do something new, although I think that's less important now. I think the more important thing is just work on something. Make a thing, make a sound design, make a melody or... Yeah, or work on a song you're already working on. You do want to do something new at least like a few times a week just because it keeps you from like, oh, stuck on one song for like two months. Like, don't, don't let that happen. But so by working for that set amount of time, like you, you create the opportunity to become inspired. Whereas so many people just like wait for the motivation. No, you need to create the motivation. So that's one of my number one tips. If you want to be motivated and inspired, do the thing that you're trying to get good at for some minimum amount of time, no matter how you feel. And just set a time exactly. you're willing to do. If you're only willing to do five minutes a day, you, you hate your life and that's all you're willing to do, set that time and do it. Like obviously more is better, but whatever you're willing to do because everybody gets in ruts and like it's really bad when you start thinking all or nothing. I need to do 10 hours a day or I'm not going to work at all. Like, don't, don't do that. Just set a minimum. Do oh, it. Gosh. I, I do the same thing with programming. Uh, and so often, like early on, I was, uh, I was having a hard time getting started because it just like seemed like there was so much to do and I wanted to spend hours every day. Um, and that was my goal. And oddly enough, I ended up achieving that goal by doing essentially the daily 30, but only like daily five or 10 minutes. Yeah. And just like do one thing, just sit down, program, like write a line of code, you know? But then I would get engrossed and then I'd, I'd want to do this and I'd want to fix this and then want to build that. And then I would end up being there for hours, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, I didn't want to sit down to begin with. Yeah, there's no way like someone in my position could do like 10 hours a day because if you got like a full time job and you're doing this as a hobby that you can't spend that much time, especially every day. Yeah. Like fuck sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Not fuck sleep. Make sure you get good night's sleep, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get good sleep. 
don't have bad unhealthy habits. We were interviewing someone for this uh, uh, video game Dead Estate that's on Newgrounds, and the the musician would wait until three days bef- uh, before the deadline and just oh, not God. sleep and crank out an entire soundtrack in three days. It sounds great, don't get me wrong, but it's just unhealthy to do. That. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking terrible. Well, it sucks when you're you're working on a team. Like right now, I have this problem. I'm trying to get like a animation done. This guy only works hard when the deadline's coming up. The deadline keeps moving, but it's just like, oh man, like I hate that. Like I like it when people are like on top of it, get it done early, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I do I do want to talk a little bit about the communities that you're involved with, Boom Katie, because you're like you're really knowledgeable about just keeping yourself motivated, about understanding yourself as an artist and, and having that kind of insight on yourself and understanding, oh, if I get in a rut, I still have to do something. Like I feel like that's something you learned from scouting communities like the Reddit sub forum you're on or just dealing with other musicians. Because the, you're you're really intelligent. Like I'm not trying to speak you up, but you're really intelligent for just understanding what you need to do to be able to enjoy what you want to do. Like a lot of people lose motivation, but you can't just give up at that moment. And and you're you being as successful as you are, you've done really well. If I do say so myself. Well, I appreciate the uh, compliments, man. Thank you for real. Well, I appreciate the advice you're giving. This is really good advice for anybody trying to pursue anything, and it's brilliant that I haven't. You're like one of the first people to ever give this kind of advice. Sweet. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm glad. I mean, I like I like that Jacob brought it to programming because this this applies to everything. Like this isn't just a music thing. Communities is super important. I so like you know we're social animals. Having someone to show your stuff to is super important another super important thing to 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 stay motivated let me Um, add a clarification are we talking about like just someone in general to show your stuff to or someone that could also bring critique to your stuff too so it's both so it's weird because early on the criticism doesn't matter as much because the more important thing is that you're just do it like when you're a beginner like interesting feedback is important but the most important thing is just put the damn time in do the work spend the time yeah and you'll probably get better and then if you're in a rut and you know you keep practicing over and over which i've seen and and you're not really improving then you need to really focus on feedback but you know one step at a time yeah so communities like you know having a friend that you're working with is you can call it a community anyone you can show stuff to who will care about your progress is important Finding communities, Discord is like huge now. I, I don't mean like how big it is, but how, how, how valuable how, it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How valuable it is, exactly. Uh, for example, I started a server called the Producer and Artist Hub. I no longer run it just because I was too busy. Actually, DPZ, who's in here right now, he runs it now. Shout out to DPZ. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I started that server as a as a way to do exactly what I'm saying. Where you know everyone posts a daily thirty every day. The point is to reward your work ethic, not your, pro- not your um, results. And that's for artists and musicians. If anyone wants to join that, you can uh, post a link. If DPZ hears this, DPZ or Blueboa, someone post a link to that if you can. Blueboa is another mod in my server. Um, so having a community, the biggest, the most important thing I think is that it's really good if you can find people at your level because then you're improving at the same time. Because when you're like in a community where somebody's way, or say you have a friend and they're way better than you, they have to be a really good friend and have really good, like they have to be really good at complimenting you on your work ethic, not your results for it to work well. So if you can find someone at your level, then you're always improving together. That's the best. Like that's amazing because that's the most motivating thing because you're always comparing yourself to somebody who's, who's close to your level, which means that you're not going to feel as much of that, like, oh shit, I, I wish I could just get better faster. You know, that's really good. But honestly, any, any, um, community you have that rewards you for working hard. This is super important. And y- you also need to re- reward yourself in this way, which is this. If you're a beginner and your music is bad, and again, this applies to everything, programming, whatever, like anything you're bad at that you're trying to get good at, it's very, very important that you reward yourself based on how hard you're working, not on what results you're getting, because your music is going to suck. Whatever you're working on is going to suck. That's just the nature of being a beginner. But if every time you work for one hour, like genuinely work hard for one hour, try to learn stuff, try to make make something you're, that's past your comfort zone, you say to yourself, like literally just say this, even if you don't feel it, just say, I did a good job today by working hard for an hour. Say it in your head, say it out loud, whatever. Have a friend, be in a community where you un- there's a mutual understanding that you're going to compliment each other and make each other feel good based on how hard you're working. So say, if my friend shows me something they made and then said, check this out. I spent an hour working on this. I tried these new techniques. I tried this. Uh, tried to push my comfort zone in this way. And you say, 
good fucking work, dude. That's awesome that you did that. Like, again, it sounds forced, but this is what you have to do because we're not naturally going to think like this, but this works. Like it, it affects your brain. You don't need to genuinely believe it to just say it out loud and it'll naturally like you'll, you'll start to feel it over time. So force yourself to just say, I did good fucking work because I worked hard. That is so important because when you genuinely get in the mindset of, I feel good when I work hard, then it, your motivation is long, no longer tied to something out of your control. It's no longer tied to these results that you're incapable of getting because you're a beginner. It's now tied to something you're completely in control of, which is how hard am I working right now? How, how hard am I trying to learn right now? How, how, how good am I doing in the thing that actually matters, which is the process? Find that community, make that community if you need to. Find a group of friends, whatever you need to do and hammer it home. Guys, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna compliment each other on our progress, on how hard we work, not on how good what we make is. And that's so powerful, unbelievably powerful. This is the best TED Talk I've ever attended. I just, <laughs> I just want to say that if anyone here doesn't feel motivated to just work their ass off, I feel bad for you. Because right now I'm like looking at my own life. Like that's how I should approach it. Just work your ass off. Compliment yourself on the work. The product is what the product is. It's not as big of a deal as just it's just working. And I love that. You're, you're yeah, awesome, this is super boo, cool. Kitty. <laughs> well, thank you. I hope you guys like it. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's go forward a couple steps here. So let's say like, uh, you got this beginner, he's been making some crap, he's been crafting some of his work and he's at a level where he wants to take it to the next level. How do we go from that to say like, how did you get involved with something like Beat Saber? Cause that's what we could say is probably like a lot of people here. It's like, that's how they would define success as being part of a video game that everyone can play. That's literally been on like Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon show. Was it? Yeah. I don't, I don't even know half the shit that Beat Saber has been in. <laughs> so Yeah. But like you got this super accessible platform that a lot of people can get. And then like you don't even have to get DLC content and boom, boom, kitty is there, which by the way, that's kind of how I rediscovered the fact that you were still going. Cause I'm like, Holy crap. I know this guy. He was on Newgrounds, and he's on this freaking video game. That's super exciting. That's awesome. So how do you go from like, I'm a beginner making dumb music to like, Holy crap. Now I'm on a, now I'm on a video game that everyone can see. Yeah, a really popular video game where videos of it just get like millions of views on YouTube just from being good at it. So Beat Saber, um, I feel I'm I'm privileged to be part of Beat Saber. It's truly an honor. Like it's such an awesome game. I'm I'm so glad how popular it is, and it really like basically doubled my fan base, maybe even more. But biggest thing for me is it introduced me to uh, an, an older audience, whereas before it was all you know Newgrounds people, um, which is great. You know I love Newgrounds, and uh, but you know. That Beat Saber thing is important. <laughs> uh, God, I so if there's time, I, I I'd love to talk more about Newgrounds a bit, and then actually that that might be the main thing. The Beat Saber thing is the other thing I want to talk about, so I'll go into that now. So yeah, and I'll connect this to motivation too because it's an inspiration. Um, so the way I got into Beat Saber, so in 2018, 2018 is when I think I really developed this like daily 30 idea. And I was streaming every day, which for me at the time, live streaming was really helping me stay motivated because then every day people would be expecting me to be like, oh, let's go see Boom Kitty make music. And I'd expect those people, you know, and so there's like an obligation and that really helped me stay motivated. And, and, you know, it helped me make a little more money. But so 2018, I really started streaming a lot. I was doing the daily 30s and that's when I made, I made Tokyo Takedown with uh, this guy, Yubi. I made uh, Rum and Bass, which was the one that got into Beat Saber. Um, One of my favorites. (laughs) <laughs> thank you i'm glad i made shred again which like is pretty good but i think rum and bass is rum and bass tokyo takedown's really good and rum i'd say tokyo takedown was the the start of like my next phase of like this more orchestral like uh well, holy war was really the start of it but tokyo takedown is when i like got better at it holy um, war was another good one sorry this is fun <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you, thank you. um so so the way i got into beat saber was this i I, I I had seen the game like I actually saw it on Reddit, which like before it got out, like the, the Reddit post made it go viral. And it was that's when Beat Saber first kind of blew up before it was out. It was like, oh, this game looks really cool. This looks like a really cool VR game. Um, So I started following them on Twitter. And one day I just randomly looked at Twitter. Like, I don't I don't even check Twitter that often. I didn't at the time. I randomly looked at Twitter like sometime in mid, like mid 2018. I just saw Beat Saber made a tweet that was like, hey, musicians, if you want to uh, be in the game, go ahead and send us a demo. We'll check it oh, out. Sick. So I was just, like, they had an email address there. So I was just like, all right, fuck it. I'll just send them a demo. So I sent them, I sent them Tokyo Takedown, like as it was close to being done. 
Yeah, it wasn't even finished. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. I, I, and I forgot it. I forgot that I had sent the email. I didn't forget, but I was just, I didn't like, I, I knew nothing would come of it. I was like, this is stupid. Like, they're, they don't care. Like, they want bigger artists. Like, they, they replied to me a month later. Like, it took them one month. I'm guessing they just got a shit ton of emails and started ignoring them. They replied a month later. They're like, hey, this is pretty cool. Do you have anything else in the works? Because Tokyo Takedown was released. Oh, snap. And, and they wanted they wanted new music. So I was like, yeah, uh, let me send you something in like a week because I was still working on Rum and Bass. So I sent them Rum and Bass and they loved it. Like it was just kind of luck. Like, so it's really funny. The guy, the head of music at Beat Saber just really loves my style, which is kind of totally luck. So oh my gosh. There's a lot of luck in this stuff. Um, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. Yeah, I sent them Rum and Bass and he's like, wow, the team loves it. And like, oh God, it was funny. They sent me, they sent me their terms, which I, I'm not allowed to disclose. I was like, man, these terms fucking suck. Like, I don't want to be part of this. Like, I was like, <laughs> like, I want to be part of Beat Saber, but not on these fucking terms. So like, I sent him an email just being like, look, um, I just have a lot of questions about this. I didn't say I didn't like it. I just said, here's my questions, which made it obvious. I was like skeptical. And like, it was so funny to me. He replied, the head of music there replied saying, like just the whole email, it was a long email he sent me. Be like it was so obvious they wanted me almost more than I wanted them, which like God, that's oh, a good wow. feeling, dude. Like to be clear, I wanted to be in Beat Saber really bad, so maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but it was very clear that he was like willing to write up this long ass email just to try to get me to agree to hit their terms. Once he explained it more clearly, he's like, "Here's why we have these terms. Here's how we function as a company, and here's like how we're going to use your music." It actually made a lot more sense. It's I still don't like the deal, but whatever. Like it's it was good enough, and I'm like it's still worth worth being in the game. So, but that was really cool. Um, but that's how I got in the game, and I, I want to tie this into uh, motivation, actually, or not motivation, but just like how, what what to do as a producer for things like this. I find a mistake a lot of people make when they're doing anything is they, as they start to get better, they start to focus way too much on business and promotion when it still doesn't matter. So, interesting. Yeah, because here's the deal. I got into Beat Saber because I sent one email. It's, it was so easy to send that email. It took me five minutes. Like I just, here's a link. Here's my SoundCloud, blah, done. Like it's so easy to promote yourself and to make connections when your music is awesome. And I'm not trying to like brag. I'm just saying my rum and bass was a good enough song and Tokyo Takedown to, to, to draw attention. Like my SoundCloud was good enough that people at Beat Saber listened to it. And they're like, oh, this guy's good. If my music wasn't good enough, it doesn't fucking matter how many emails I send, how many people I try to contact. If my music isn't good enough, they're not going to respond. So there's a point where if your music's not good enough, then it doesn't matter how much you promote yourself. So don't waste your fucking time on promoting yourself. Like if your music's genuinely not good enough and you need to know like, so this is another step. So like I'd say, like, because I said that whole beginner thing, don't worry about results. There's a point where you do need to worry about results is when (laughs) you're actually trying to make a career out of this. Once once you have that motivation, like you get the motivation thing down, you, you're focused on the process. There's a point where you need to start focusing on results. The point is not to tie your motivation to it. So you still try to get better. You still like are inspired when you do something well, but y- you're still going to work hard, even if you're still making crap. That's the point. You're always going to work hard because of how you've set up your mindset, your communities, whatever. Once you're at that point where you're trying to promote yourself, you're trying to genuinely get better. That's when feedback becomes critical. You know, you really need to compare your music to the professionals. Put it in the DAW. DAW is the software you use to make music. Put it, compare your song to their song. Really listen with a critical ear. Get feedback from people who can are willing to give you honest feedback. You know, your your true friends who like you say, listen, tell me what you really hear is wrong with this. D- don't just like find yes men who just love everything you do. It's useless. And a quick note on that: we're not talking about like you got your friend who's really like into music, but like he hasn't made a song in his life. <laughs> That does matter, to be clear. But, you, but yeah, it's not the only yeah. thing that matters. You need the people who like know how to make music too because they can help you along the process. And I think that's a little more of what I'm getting at. But like, there are also, uh, like there's one buddy that I have who has never made any music. Um, he's not super musically inclined. He is artistically inclined. Like he's good with uh, like production and stuff like that. And the way that he describes things that he doesn't like about my music um, is fascinating. Like I remember once he was just like, I just wish this sound were rounder. Whoa. You yeah. know? It's just like, it just feels like it feels too sharp and fuzzy. Uh, and it was, it was perfect. Like it was exactly what I needed to hear. And more than he knew, uh, I, I literally just had to round out the waveform. Oh yeah, that's funny. And so it was like, 
people like that, I think are extremely useful and they don't get as caught up in maybe you should try this with the compression uh, with the compressor, you know, or try um, this with the EQ. Instead, they just describe what they hear and we kind of get to troubleshoot how to fix that or how to change that on our own. Yeah, exactly. So okay. that's what I was going to get into basically is that casual listeners who don't know the process of making music often give like the best advice just because they're the people you're targeting. You're not making music for other musicians. Actually, something I hate about the dubstep community so much is that so many dubstep people make music for other dubstep people. They're just like, look, look how crazy my sound design is. It sounds like ass, but other musicians will be impressed by it because it's crazy. It's this weird like technique I use, you know? And not obviously there's lots of great dubstep out there, but uh, I just don't think that's what you should be making. I mean, if you want to make music for other musicians, fine. But like, I make music for people. Like I make music because I want people right. to like it. Normal people, you know, not other musicians. Like, so yeah, you need their feedback. You you need mus- non-musicians feedback because they, they know what they want. Like they know what they like, what they don't like. So the key is like, you need, you need the feedback of other musicians for like how to fix those issues. Like, oh, your friend says it needs to be rounder. And you you knew what to do, but somebody, a new producer might not know what to do. And they'd be like, look, my friend's describing this. And like, and, and then they can see like, oh, like, I think I know what he means. Like, it's kind of like, you need to do the EQ in this way and use this technique. And I can show you how to do that. So that's where the value of like another producer comes in is how, how to do the things right. that need to be done. So both, I'd say equally important. The process of getting bigger, the most important thing by far, make awesome music. Like here's another example. My song, Any Other Way, got on this huge YouTube channel called uh, X Keto Music. It has like 3 million subscribers. I literally just sent the song. I was like, hey, check out this song. Next day, they're like, oh, we really like this. We're going to post it. If the song wasn't good, they wouldn't have done that. So it's like promotion is so easy. Not, not so easy, but it's so much easier when your music is good. So if you want to get big, make fucking awesome music. Make music that people want to hear and then worry about sending emails and shit. Don't worry about the email. Right. Don't worry about that shit. It doesn't matter. Well, especially nowadays with all the social media, if you make something good, it catches on and then people just spread it naturally. Like uh, like uh, I was going to say virus, but that, that's not... Is that really a good contemporary Dude, you're term? Infected but the, with the good vibes of all the ways, man. Well, it gets spread around on its own. You don't have to do too much promotion. We're making good stuff, but it's it's almost contradictory to the way that Newgrounds works, where like everything's community based. You have to you have to get involved with the community to even get noticed or like to figure out how to grow as a as a person. But it makes a lot of sense. Make good music. I think this honestly ties back into the Boom Kitty uh origin of finding out like that moment you hate your sound you realize you you like the sound you were going for and then after that all that studying all that rigorous putting yourself through finding your sound then you got to focus on like crafting that into something good that people people want to use in their videos or in their game exactly so you're right yeah. like, like soon as you here. find that sound work your ass off and then you, next thing you know you'll be promoted by your fans because you're making good shit because you put in that time and effort to find out who you are as a musician i like that idea and then send one email to to beat saber and then you're fine <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah so make good music and then send an email every once a month <laughs> yeah perfect perfect plan key for, <laughs> key for success everyone that's how you make it big <laughs> all right all right all right we're 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 gonna have to start wrapping up eventually but i would like to get to the patreons so i'm gonna shout out to all the patrons real quick thank you to our patrons it's gonna support more voice acting more music for the podcast and etc which is what we're talking about now so it's kind of important so shout out to pluff mott on Newgrounds, and then shout out to Carissa Inna Bennett. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna destroy this name. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> shout out to Buzel. Shout out to Zachary Jones, and then shout out to Thomas Falpus. Oh wait, uh, Tom Falp. <laughs> shout out to him. <laughs> and I would like to, I would like to ask uh, one of the Patreon questions real quick. Uh, Pluffbot would like to ask all of you guys what your favorite NG memory is. So we can start off with Spazer. Spazer, what's your favorite NG memory? Oh, it was... There's a couple of them. Uh, One. I'm just kidding. I'll at least do a couple, because there's also, like, finding finding the EDM scene in its beginning stages, like, on Newgrounds. Like, finding the Paragon X9, finding Jesse Valentine as many people know as F777 and also finding a uh, water flame, like just have, having a beginning understanding of what EDM was, which coming from new grounds, that makes it super cool. Um, and the other one was like finding like random little like flash games that are on there. Like, I think my favorite one was like grid 16. It was like the silly little, uh, uh, it was like the multitask game. It um, advertised itself where you had like all these little mini games that you had to keep alive in 
That is actually pretty cool. But like that's like that. like my favorite vintage Newgrounds memories. Jacob, Jacob, what is your favorite Newgrounds memory? Tie between when I was a kid and just like watching Ed's World and Joe Zombie and shit like that, getting lost in it, and uh, the Newgrounds radio chat that was around in 2010. It was why I made this account and just like that group of people. Those two times are probably the most nostalgic. Okay, for so me. Jacob, like help that. me remember what actually is my favorite memory. Uh, okay, <laughs> Super Mario Brothers Z <laughs> was it? Oh shit! That whole series oh, dude. was fantastic. Oh yeah, I like that. My favorite time on Newgrounds is uh, being in the forums and drawing stick figures, and then being told to go somewhere else to draw stick figures. <laughs> 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 and it, it actually inspired everything that I love about art today. So shout out to Newgrounds for my art origins. I'm loving that. Now, Boom Kitty, our special guest, man. What is your favorite Newgrounds memory? Probably um in like 2007 or 2008 on my old account. At the time, the audio portal had like best of the week. And one of my songs randomly got best of the week. And I remember how excited I was when I was young. Yes. I was like, oh my God, oh my yes. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably my most favorite Newgrounds memory it was awesome. It felt so good. Oh my God, man. Humble origins. And then, yes. and then you just blow up from there. I love that. So Boom Kitty, you want to get into Newgrounds uh, influence or what you think about Newgrounds. So if you still want to do that, you have the floor. Sure. Um, By the way, expect to get at least 10 new followers on Newgrounds this week. <laughs> no yeah. way. Dude, I've made it. <laughs> Newgrounds. Okay, so Newgrounds is awesome, I think, for two reasons. One is for musicians specifically. Well, new guns in general is just it's cool just how it connects people and like the community aspect. Um, just like how it's every art form, even geometry dash is like its own little form of art making levels and it's still connected to new grounds so strongly. Um so you know, new grounds in general, just as a platform, sharing art music, awesome. Uh what I love about it for music from a business standpoint, which you know, I didn't realize this when I was younger, but new grounds for audio is awesome because it's this really weird place where there's a huge the ratio of people listening to new music on Newgrounds versus the number of good artists, good musicians on there is insane. Like there's no other platform that that's even close that I can think of. Newgrounds has a lot of people and not a lot of really good musicians. It's mostly people learning. If you're decent, like you can grow there with almost no effort. Like if you you release a good song, there's not enough good music. So it it get, ends up on the charts, people share it. Like that's just what happens on Newgrounds. So if you're a musician, and like your music's getting pretty good, definitely post it to Newgrounds because that's like, I don't know where I'd be without Newgrounds. If I didn't have Newgrounds, I, I, Base Night wouldn't have been in Geometry Dash and then people wouldn't have been spreading it. I wouldn't have gotten like my initial following, which was all on Newgrounds. You know, someone like this guy, Twisted Grim, the animator, like used 1077 for like an intro video. He found it on Newgrounds, I think. So, oh, nice. Like, oh, God. Uh, Twisted Grim's really big too. I love Twisted Grim. Yeah, they haven't. Um, that that usage didn't do much for my following. Did a little something, but but yeah, like Newgrounds is such an amazing place for musicians to get discovered if their music's good. Like if you're not posting your music to Newgrounds, start doing it. Please. And then Tom actually uh hand curates the front page. I don't know if it's some mods too, but the front page, like I I know the songs on there get at least like I know it's not a lot, but oh. a thousand listens, you know, on Newgrounds is kind of big. And the musicians that I meet, they're all really friendly. It's you can learn a lot. On Newgrounds, I love that. I um, that makes me. I have a question for you guys. Sure. So I've always wondered how those charts work on on Newgrounds. So like audio, like if it gets like daily feature, is that all manual? Uh, the front pages are all manual. Uh, so anything that gets put onto the front page, yeah, that's uh somebody like a moderator or staff, um, somebody with moderation powers, um, finds the piece and they say like, ah, people okay. should see this shit. <laughs> And then the front page. Yeah. Did it used um, to be automated? I no, no. I think I has... talked to either Tom or, or Josh about it. Who programs for for Newgrounds? Um, I talked to them about it, and they said it's never been automated. Okay, cool. That's crazy. And it was like, because that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Always been curated. Always, always curated. It's fucking beautiful. But when it comes I... to like like the daily animations, or whatever, you gotta you gotta earn the score, and then you're automatically on the front page. Like, oh, okay. remember? Yeah. Right. So like. So Peabot's daily picks, for example, for like the Flash Portal. That's yeah, that's you guys all just answered a question I've had for thirteen years. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why we're here. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Welcome back, man. Welcome back to just talking about new grounds. Isn't that fun? Isn't it kind of refreshing? <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you for spending the time to talk with us. I think this is the point where we might wrap up, unless you got anything that you would like to add, Boom Kitty. I don't think so. I think I touched all the uh, my go tos are my origin story and motivation. So <laughs> and how I got into beat saber. Those are my three. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Want to make sure we got um, yeah. MPP song. We had to make sure we got that one. So we got. Oh, that. of course. <laughs> The most important origin story. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Boom Kitty, for coming down on the show. You've been a wonderful guest. You've been a, a huge motivator. There's so much I fucking learned from this. I, I have to tell and spread to other people that that I think is important. Jacob, Spencer, you guys have been wonderful uh, co-hosts. And I don't know, music, creativity, and learning how to deal with the stress of creating something and not getting demotivated. I love Learning how to make it big with new grounds. That's what this is. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, uh, thank you guys so much for having me. This is really awesome. It's really cool. It's really, yeah. this podcast that you're doing here. is really cool too. So We uh, appreciate it. Hey, those kind words about Water Flame, by the way. He's our intro song. So Oh, yeah? So, the, yeah, he'll appreciate that. Sweet. So, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for listening to the New Grounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye.